Time for the market meetup. I'm Oliver Rennick and Joe Mazzola, Nate Peterson, joining me to talk about their favorite things from the year and what they're looking for next year because they've got a unique perspective. Nate's a director of derivatives analysis at Schwab's Center for Financial Research. Joe Mazzola, get us started here, sir. As uh, what's your? Let's just go backwards first before we go forwards. What's your number one story sure. of the year? I think the. Well, let's do this. Let's let's talk about the year in sections because I think it's hard to just talk about the whole year uh, entirely. You know, at the beginning of the year it was all about uh, the expansion until you until we hit that credit wall uh, with with the banking crisis, and then you know that's when you really saw the mega caps uh, come in favor, right? People were looking for they were looking for the cash, they were looking for the peak cash flow, they were looking for the safe uh, safer balance sheets, and mega caps really took off. And then we got into this summer period where we started to see kind of a little bit more rotation. I think that happened around June where we started to see, um, you know, this idea that, well, you know, if the economy can hold up, then, you know, maybe we want to uh, we, we want to look maybe towards uh, maybe some of the smaller caps and, and maybe look a little bit more towards some of the um, cyclical names. And then that all changed again in, in, in August when the market pulled back. And then here we are at the, at the end of the year. And I think the end of the year is the, the, the last uh, you know two months or so. Maybe we'll focus on that because I think that that's really been the breadth expansion that we've seen. You know, small caps are back in favor. Uh, interest rate sensitive sectors are back in favor, but you still got, you know, the mega cap setting all all time high. So there's a lot of uh, positive momentum, positive breath under the surface. Um, and you know, it, it, it's led, uh, Oliver, it's kind of led into this area where we're at right now, where, you know, it's possible there's a bit of an inflection point. And you look at it and say, OK, we've had this big, big move off the off the, the bottom of, a, you know, almost 20 percent here from from the October lows. And where do we go from here? Uh, you know, I think that that's what it's going to set up for 2024, because I got to tell you, I, I you know, one of the things that shocked me this year was just. Uh, how quickly volatility came in and where we're trading at right now. So, you know, one of the themes that I'm going to be looking for, you know, just for the the, the next week or so kind of heading into 2024 is whether or not uh, the earnings cycle that's coming up here is going to justify these multiples and justify this low volatility that we're at right now. Okay, yeah, like that. Good take, uh, Nate Peterson. Dive in. Uh, as we talked a lot this year about volatility, and uh, it seems like one <coughs> way to just summarize it is we ended VIX, you know, low, VIX 12. Yeah, and if you look at the melt-up that we've recently had, I think that explains a lot of what's happening with, you know, the VIX basically creeping down to 52-week lows while the S&P is creeping up to 52-week highs. But, you know, Oliver, when I look back, I, I think the one thing that I take away from, uh, you know, maybe even more beyond just this past year is that, you know, take the consensus view with a, with a great assault. Uh, the Fed was wrong about transitory inflation. Uh, the analysts were wrong about a recession this year. The bond market has continually been wrong about when the Fed is going to cut. And then you look at our current view right now, and it's basically the Fed is on our side. Inflation is on its way to 2%. The soft landing is achieved and earnings growth is going to pick up next year. So as we know that that is the market psychology right now, and given that we've rallied 16% since October 27th, we have the Dow at all-time highs. We've got housing stocks at all-time highs, semiconductors all-time highs, industrials all-time highs, NASDAQ 100 all-time highs. It's easy to get caught up in this uh, mode of, hey, this is great, it feels good, the Santa Claus rally is on, but just be cautious a little bit with that in mind, because if we go back to the middle of the year, we can remember when AI came on the scene, there was a lot of optimism and we ran all the way up to 4,600 on the S&P by <laughs> late July and then pull back to 4,100 by October. So sometimes you got to zig when the market zags. So it feels good to be where we are right now, but don't go to sleep. Yeah, I like that. Uh, and also, you know, we got a little chop right at that S&P all-time high. And you know, the NASDAQ kind of blows through it. But uh, when you broaden out, the weakness shows up more. That is kind of one of those key stories of this year, which is the bigger your basket of stocks gets, Joe, the more likely that stock underperformed the very tech-heavy index or that basket underperformed. 
Very true. And I'm going to add one other thing to that, Oliver. If I were to tell you last year at this time that the 10 year would be exactly where it was <laughs> in January of last year, um, it, 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 that to me is, is another big story. You know, just the move that we've had in the bond volatility and how that has led into equity volatility, right? I mean, that's something that you and I have talked about all year. Keep an eye on the move index as that move index has really kind of squashed these last couple of months and kind of come back down uh, to, to normalized levels. You've seen the uh, equity volatility come in as well, too. So, you know, it, what started off as, as a really, really volatile year, and it's been a volatile year, you know, for, for the majority of 2023, uh, it's just uh, amazing. And, and I think, you know, Nate said it well, as the market has ebbed and flowed and, and, and moved in all these different directions, it might make sense at this point right now to kind of look to say, OK, well, you know, Q1 2024, do I want to ride this train into Q1 2024? Do I want to trim on these, you know, on these winners a little bit uh, and get some some cash ready? Perhaps if there is a bit of a pullback at, at the beginning, you know, one of the things that we're looking at is uh, the forecast for Q4 earnings estimates. Those continue to come down. Now, there's two ways to look at that, Oliver. There, there's, you know, that hurdle rate is now lower than what it's been. Uh, but I think the other way to look at it is that, um, you know, there are there is some expectations for some uh, uh, first half slowness uh, mm. from the analyst community. Absolutely. And we're starting to see that kind of price in, into uh, the the earnings uh, expectations for Q1. So something to keep an eye on. Uh, especially because uh, with the valuation liftoff we got those last couple months, right. earnings are going to be huge here. They got to – these stocks still have to grow into them. Uh, uh, Nate, give you the last thought for about 60 seconds. Sure. So, you know, I kind of teed up basically to respect that uh, the consensus view might be wrong. So what would I look for in Q1 to get an indication that perhaps they're off again? Uh, number one, look for any outliers in economic data. Uh, maybe that long and variable lag from the interest rate hikes haven't hit fully. We got the last one in July. If you believe 12 to 18 months, we're not baked there yet. The other thing I would say is the consumer is doing really good. Consumer confidence, retail sales. Uh, if you look at the stock market going up with housing prices holding in there, that's the wealth effect. What affects inflation? It's either going to come from constricted supply or increased demand. Has the recent easing and the increased potential demand from the consumer translate into inflation perhaps being more sticky or actually ticking up? What if that happened? That could alter the Fed view. That could alter the uh, market psychology. So be mindful of that. We're not there yet, but as we look forward, be mindful of those potential catalysts. Okay, great stuff, guys. Uh, nice so wrap to the conversation. Appreciate it very much. Been a pleasure with you this year. Talking markets, Nate Peterson, Joe Mazzola.